What's going on everyone? I'm Sean Scott with Reflections TV. Today I have the Be Easy Radio Show. What's going on fellas? Oh, what's up man? What's going on? Right now, we're on the campus of the University of Toledo. Um, the Be Easy Show airs every Wednesday on WXUT 88.3 from 10 p.m. to midnight. So for everyone who doesn't know, uh, just go ahead and explain what is the Be Easy Radio Show. Right, you want to start, boys? Well, Kenny and I started the Be Easy Show to um, basically collaborate uh, the African American students here at the University of Toledo. Um, we started off because it wasn't really radio wasn't really popping on the campus at all. Honestly, I feel like we kind of brought it brought it to life. Mm -hmm. But um, me and Kenny are both communications majors. I met him in our um, TV studio class. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. back in that day. And then. Um, I wanted to go into radio, so um, went to WSUT. We started the radio show, and from there, we just been taking off. Yeah, and um, well, the way, one of the main things that why we started the Be Easy Show was to kind of create like an organic atmosphere within radio. Mm -hmm. um, the way we, we have people on, and whether it's a personality or promotions or anybody that's helping us out, we all we all in a, a truthful atmosphere. Um, we try to be. Um, criticizing each other on our weaknesses and even on our strengths sometimes. And we just try to have a like kind of an atmosphere where we all are accountable for each other. And we're trying to, or we are making that contagious around the University of Toledo. Um, there's multiple examples and things we've done that um, a lot of student organizations, um, other shows on the, on the station, or even just general students that have adopted. So um, the beach show to this point has definitely been a success. Now, how many of you is it? Just y'all two or y'all have other members as well? Um, well, I guess the so to say founding members, so to say, is um, Boyce and I and another guy. Um, but currently, um, we are recruiting for uh, multiple things. We look, we're looking for more personalities, more promotions people, more um, DJs, uh -huh. graphic designers, um, anything you name it. We're trying to utilize on anybody's or most people's strengths um, to make our show more successful. Uh, with the other personalities, what, uh, what segments or uh, do they have like during the show, during your segment? Well, me being an uh, economics major, uh, I have the economy show, mm -hmm. and basically the purpose of it is just to um, give a brief, like just a, a thin layer of like economics and how you can save your money and like just different things dealing with money. And because I feel like as college students, like we we can definitely do a lot better with uh, our money handling and everything. <laughs> Man, like that, right? Management <laughs> is a big thing. So, and then myself, um, I have please excuse my hustle. Um, it's basically a series where. Um, I interview businesses, um, artists, nonprofits, um, whatever you name it, um, community members, whatever the case, um, here in the city of Toledo and beyond. Um, I bring more of an awareness to whatever they bring to the table. Uh -huh. And um, it's just basically to, like I said, bring awareness to them and the things that they do and how it benefits the community at large or the market. Right. Being as you said, there are other organizations and you know, you guys aren't the only ones airing on WXUT. What separates you guys from everyone else? What is it? What's the, the vision of the Be Easy Show? Um, what separates us from the others is our show itself. Um, the structure, how it's ran, um, the true intention of it is all ran like a business and a station. Uh -huh. So it's a station with it's a station within a show. Uh -huh. Like um, we have a website, we have um, social media pages, um, we have positions, um, we have, I mean, you name it, it's really ran like a business and or an organization. Uh -huh. So um, everything that we do is fully intentional. Everything we do is fully strategic. Um, and we just, we, we look to, like I said, be a lot more contagious amongst the station because um, even though these are college radio shows, these are opportunities where you can build your resume and right. um, get your air, tra air checks right from our radio people out there. And uh, really just kind of building your own brand and your own self rather than just going on the air and, and talking and then walking away. Um, we, we get to learn or even teach and amongst each other FCC rules and um, just things that, that make you successful within radio marketing strategies, um, all kind of stuff. So um, we really run our stuff intentionally like a business instead now, of just talking on air. All right, now how difficult was it to start the be easy? So being that you are a student organization as far as getting a collaborative uh, group of people together to come and start. Was it easy? Was it hard in between? Um, I think it was fairly easy. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't know that, I mean, in order to get a station, well, a show at WSUT, you just 
really just show up and tell them that you want to show. They'll train you real quick and you go from there. <clears throat> I think where a lot of people fall off on is just putting in that extra thing to, you know, make them keep going. Right. A lot of people just, uh, I feel like Kenny and I, we work really hard and we kind of put in extra hours. And um, for, for your previous question, I guess this will go tie into that too. I think the one thing that sets us apart from other shows mm -hmm. is our genuity. For real. I feel like um, we are very genuine with um, like our, like people that we have come on the show. Mm -hmm. Kenny, when we started the show, was the president of SOP, mm -hmm. the Student African American Brotherhood. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in my fraternity, Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. Mm -hmm. And um, so we go out into the community beyond the studio. Like we went to BG for their NAACP event that they had. Mm -hmm. And um, we're kind of like a family. So I feel like that's one thing that sets us apart from other shows as well, is just how close we are and like we're more genuine. We want to actually kind of bring the community together. Mm -hmm. It's just not about we on air from 10 to 12 and that's it. Like we take it outside of the studio. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, do you guys, is this your first radio experience? Have you interned or had jobs anywhere else where you have uh, experience with radio broadcasting? Oh, this one is going to get tricky because we, we interned at opposite stations. <laughs> yeah, um, but I have to shout out my intern experience <laughs> to um, Hot 97 here in Toledo. Right. And then I also um, interned for a year for ESPN Radio, mm -hmm. um, ESPN Cleveland back at home in Cleveland. So um, I came in this with years of radio experience. Um, the internship with Hot 87 was a couple years ago, and it brought me um, the business aspect of radio. So that that's more of a newer experience. Um, unfortunately, my, my colleague, Data 107. <laughs> <laughs> Not nah, unfortunately. <laughs> I love the juice, though. <laughs> I interned at uh, the Juice FM 107.3. Uh, still, I help them out from time to time. But um, definitely working with Tisha Lee and Tommy K out at the Juice really, you know, kind of got me in the right direction and the ideas. The summer right after I came from my internship, my first uh, summer of interning with them, I got with Kenny, I'm like, man, we got all these different ideas, we gotta do this. And I really feel like that helped, like what he was saying about the business aspect of radio. And it really helped set those, those that, I guess that ground for us. Yeah, man, I mean, we and ironically, we did our internships the same summer. Mm -hmm. So a lot of stuff we came back with, we had both learned the same things. Mm -hmm. Maybe some software was a little bit different or some strategies was different. But we had learned strengths and weaknesses from both our stations. Mm -hmm. And we were able to um, input those within the college station. And then we also made connections so well within our internships that we're able to pass on opportunities for uh -huh. internships and volunteer opportunities with those both of those stations. Uh -huh. And those kind of things you just you just can't start up a show and be like, oh, I got I, I got plugs here, I got plugs here, I got opportunities here, like, just as well as an organic and it's genuine, we have opportunities to get in the field professionally as well. Now, being that you all do have experience, what advice could you give to someone else who would be, uh, you know, that wants to go into radio broadcasting? My advice, and this would be the advice just for anybody, is just take any opportunity that you can get and really just utilize it. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of communications and people here at UT say that you know they want to do this or they want to do that but we have these resources available for us and if you just go right up to WXUT it's, it's nothing to really start your own radio show it's really just all about putting the work in and just being persistent, so um, persistent. okay well if I was to give some advice um, I would say create your own brand and stack up on it from there um, if there's not a lane then create one if you feel like there's not a, um, a lane in your profession which is radio um, Create it, and after you create it, um, learn the the skills and the things it takes um, to make it better and to make it great. Um, study the greats. Um, listen to the shows that you love. Listen to them in details. Pick up mentors. Um, just really ooze out every single thing about the profession, rather than just talking, because it's a lot more. It's a lot more at stake. It's a lot more at hand. It's it's bigger than just getting on the air and talking to people. You literally have lives at stake when you're on the mic. Right. And I know, boys, you hinted at you guys like to broaden, like to broaden yourselves, and like to do or things throughout the community. Uh, what other events? I know you guys hosted and had other events in the past. Go ahead and uh, tell the people what type of events that those were. Uh, well, me and Kenny, uh, along with the other the Be Easy crew as well, we uh, last semester actually we uh, did our first um, the Be Easy Hip Hop Appreciation. And it was a collaboration with some local artists out in Toledo and different organizations. And it was really, it was great. Um, it was a real positive event. We got a lot of the local artists like on our campus. We even got um, 
Midwest Rico. Oh yeah, from Detroit. Yeah. He came on the stage, he shut it down. And it was it was a real good eye-opening experience. We got some people sponsored, we got clothing lines out there. It was like a real collaborative event and it, it turned out really great. Yeah, and to kind of piggyback off that event, um, that event brought um, the community at large, entrepreneurs within the building to give away stuff and to get people more aware of whatever they had, which whether it was a clothing line, a makeup line, um, wherever the case may have been. And then also for the artists, um, they gave they gave the artists um, a moment in time to really um, appreciate the genre of hip hop and to let people take it all in. And some people learn who certain artists were, and then certain people learn that this artist guy has a lot of talent and he's right here in my city. Yeah. Um, and then another event we just recently did, which was it's more it was more of a relaxing event in the community, and we did a, a pool party um, over the summer. Um, DJ 100 did our music. Shout out to DJ 100. It was, um, and it was in collaboration with um, the Lucas County, I don't want to put the wrong um, name out there, but they, it was an adopt a pet thing. And people were adopting pets, um, they were getting awareness on um, animal abuse, and then just as well, um, we had good music and this as a water, and people would jump all around. Yeah, yeah, being that you two do have experience, uh, what are some of the best things that you like about radio so far? I believe that, uh, Media period, uh, not not just radio. I feel like that is the way that um, it's the future. Honestly, I feel like that is more. You can see more and more by social media alone. That um, it's just that's the revolution. Like if you want to speak out or if you want to protest or anything, I feel like you will be able to do it through media. So I feel like radio is just it's a good way to outlet positivity to the community. And that's what I like about it because I, I like to be positive and I want to uplift the black community especially. So I feel like that's a great avenue for that. Um, I think one of the best things about radio that is kind of like behind closed doors is you literally have so many lives in your hand for a particular moment. No matter if they're in Africa, they can be right in Toledo, they can be in Cleveland, they can be in LA. You can have all these different lives from so many different places in your hand at one time because they're listening to you. They're giving you a chance to influence their thoughts and their motives and the things that they like to do. So um, everything that you do on air has to be intentional. And the fact that you can do that, and you can have that kind of impact, and you can really, I mean, you have a little bit of control of the world for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on how you use it. Right. Uh, I don't want to discourage y'all too, but what's some of the worst things that you don't like about it? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing about radio that I would say I like the least is just... Or something that you could change. Something I could change. Don't want to discourage I, anyone yeah. out there. I guess I would change the commercial aspect, the business. Like, I feel like sometimes radio is so business that it loses the whole music aspect. Like, I understand that, you know, it's money behind, you know, a single and pushing it out there. But sometimes I just feel like I don't want to hear the same song right. every time I listen to the radio. All right. I feel like it could be some diversity. And that's something that we bring to the table as well. Yeah, right. we, we spin different music and we spin independent artists as well. So, um, but uh, I guess the worst thing about radio, uh, I guess this is a goal in any profession. Um, when you, I guess, recognize that like there's other, and this is not, I'm not taking shots at WHUT or anything, but when there's others around you um, within that atmosphere or that profession that like don't appreciate it, mm -hmm. that, that just, that, that irks me because it's like, like I said, like there's so much at stake and you're like not appreciative at that. So, I mean, there's plenty of people that's out there in any profession that's not doing it right. They're just doing it just to do it, just to get whatever they want out of it. So, but I feel like in radio or in media, there's so many people in it for the wrong reasons. Right. How so, was, how was some of your some of the best interviews that you've had, or radio personalities that you've had, or experiences that you've had? I think it was pretty cool. We had a connection through Kenny um, and his internship at uh, High 97. Mm -hmm. We got to go to Detroit and we got to go to a listening party for Bob's um, album, um, and I think that was like that was real cool. We really got to be there, and we were just in the studio listening to his new album. We got to hear it first, yeah. and we got to really uh, have a question and answer with him. Yeah, so it was pretty cool. Oh man, best interview ever! And this is crazy, but um, I say my interview with Rocky Dub. <laughs> um, I had, Rocky Dub is a, um, a hip hop artist um, from Toledo, Ohio, um, and like the vibe. I mean, if you know him. And if you don't know him, follow him on social media pages, Rocky Dunn, do a little research on him. But, I mean, that was probably, like, the funnest interview I've had because he was just the most, like, realist. Like, he was just, like, really pouring out real stuff to me. 
Yeah. And like a lot of interviews is cookie cutters, like, okay, what do you have out? And what have you done? What do you got coming out? Oh, how can they follow you on social media? Yeah. That's most so that's most interviews. Right. But this interview just took it to another direction. Um, it wasn't inappropriate in any way, but it was just a fun it was a fun personality, man. He was something else besides the music. Right. It brought more to the table than just lyrics. It was just like a fun personality. Do you have a lot of celebrities that come through the studio? Do you have a lot of independent artists, or or do you have artists throughout the campus as well? Which like is the part? I guess that the first is. group of people. Um, we have, we, I, well, we have connections where um, at times we do get um, a lot of major artists. I know we have had history with um, Bob's listening to party, Wale's listening to party, um, Trey Songs, Seven Streeter. Um, I mean, I can go on. Uh, Oh, Doughboy's Cash Out, um, Manuel Hudson, um, and then a host of independent artists, um, Midwest Rico, a, a Rocky Duh, a Felice Sofe, um, a Rob G, a Urban Survival Entertainment, shout out to that intro song. <laughs> um, I mean, I can go on and on, but I mean, on that on that level, as far as independent artists and, and major artists, um, we're in it to, like I said, expose them. So we don't really close our doors to guys that are, so to say, lower echelon, or even it can be it can be Big Sean compared to um, the guy that's in your, your, your basement making the track. Right. As long as it's professional um, and it's and it's of quality sound, um, we definitely give it a listen. We definitely throw it in our rotation. Being out the year is new for some of the things you guys got coming up for this upcoming school year. I know you got some things under your belt. Man. Um, I know we definitely want to do the Be Easy Hip Hop Appreciation in the spring semester. Part two. Man. Yeah, part two. And we really want to come harder too. And we're definitely um we're definitely gonna probably um go on the route of trying to get some budget money to get a real headliner. Gotcha. Um and that's and that's no shots to Midwest Rico. He held it down for our yeah, first down. headliner, like that was our first headliner. He was independent. Um he has a breaking major barriers records um, up in Detroit with Charlie Baltimore. Um really brought so much energy here, like probably lost 10 pounds on the stage <laughs> like no doubt um but yeah hip hop appreciation part two um and then a host of other concert events and being in, um, in more industry listening parties um and looking to do um, a few um, meet and greets for um, major artists so to say so yeah and getting more i guess connected with student organizations on campus maybe doing a couple collaborations or so mm -hmm. just to kind of still stick to our roots of being uc students and keeping the uc community strong well, I want to thank the BZ Show for letting me having this opportunity to interview you all. Anything else you want to let the people know? Make sure you um, go and check out our website, thebeezyshow.com, and then follow us on all social media pages, um, Mixed Cloud, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, The Easy Show. It's literally Be Easy. All right. So, all right. Be Easy. Well, there you have it. Be Easy Show, Sean Scott with Reflections TV. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Reflections TV. You can also contact us at ReflectionsTV at gmail.com. Thank you very much. KK on the beats. <laughs>